So in the wake of the NBA bubble and with the Suns getting eliminated and the Trailblazers getting the eighth spot instead, well, Jim Boylan gets fired and Vladi Divac steps down, probably much to the light of uh, many Kings fans and many Bulls fans. So that's how I'm going to analyze today. What is good, YouTube? Let's chat back another video today. So if you do enjoy some authentic, informed, and unbiased NBA breakdowns, then drop a like, drop a subscribe. Also comment down below, who do you think has the brightest future? The Bulls or the Kings? Obviously, uh, both the Bulls and the Kings did not meet expectations, and that has a lot to do with um, Jim Boylan being the coach of the Bulls, and just he just did not do a good job. They did have some injuries too, but it, I think it was mostly coaching. He just had some weird rotations at times and just, yeah, he didn't have a good relationship with Zach Levine for the most part. At least that's the way the media made it seem. Um, or at least, I mean, that's how kind of Zach Levine made it seem too, but he was always pretty professional about his responses. And then with the Kings, Valley Divac has just not made some good moves. I mean, Look, they did make some good signs in the offseason. Uh, Corey Joseph and Trevor Reza look good on paper, but they didn't turn out to be that good. Corey Joseph is a great backup point guard, but he's not worth 12 million a year. And then Trevor Reza played so bad, they have to trade him for Kent Bazemore, who actually did bring a lot of value. But nonetheless, Vlade Divic has not just been able to put a winning team together. Now, this year, I think they did have the talent to do that, but it just did not pan out the way Vlade Divac thought he would, and he did say a couple years ago, if he was not able to build a winning team in Sacramento, he would step down, and he did not build a winning team, and he did not make a good coach selection either, in my opinion, in Luke Walton. Um, he's just done some weird things as well that just have left me kind of confused and really like questioning like what the Kings were trying to do, but yeah, anyways, I'll get into, I'll get into that later, but first, I want to get into the Bulls. So the Bulls, much like the Kings, I think they had a really good roster. Honestly, they had, I mean, it wasn't like they had like supreme talent or anything to be a title contender, but I thought they clearly had enough talent to be a playoff contender, maybe get the seventh or eighth seed. Like I thought they would be where Orlando and Brooklyn are currently right now. Like it's not like they had a bad starting lineup. They had Zach Levine, they had Lowry Markman, you know, they had Wendell Carter Jr., three, you know, fairly young players that have showed a lot of promise and potential over the past couple seasons. And then, you know, they have a great three and D um, wing in Otto Porter Jr. And then they also have kind of a, a weird point guard rotation, I guess you could say. I mean, they drafted Kobe White, which I think was a good selection. Um, but, you know, they started Thomas Sadoransky. They got him from the Bulls in free agency last year. Not from the Bulls. They got him from the Wizards in free agency last year. So he was their starting point guard. Um, I thought that him and Otto Porter Jr. would kind of complement the other guys well, but that really... Just did not happen. Otto Porter Jr. was injured all season. Same thing with Larry Markin. Those two guys like barely ever played. And Wendell Carter Jr. was kind of on and off with injuries too. Really the only consistent guy on the team was Zach Levine, who really, he's an excellent player, but he shouldn't be a number one option. Um, he's very efficient scorer, and he's a very good scorer, very athletic, but I don't think he should be your primary ball handler. And that's why I think when Larry Markin is healthy and you know, he doesn't kind of have a coach who will kind of limit limit him to being a spot up shooter and not really put him in position to succeed. I think that him and Zach Levine would, would have been great together if that was the case and Lowry was healthy. But I mean, it was really a combination of a lot of things for the Bulls. Um, they, they just, it was just not a good situation um, with all the injuries and then the bad coaching. And Jim Boyle would just throw out some weird rotations at times. Like sometimes he would play like a three point guard lineup I remember even seeing a news conference where he was like, I'm going to build our Bulls bench. Well, Jim Bullen, what you probably should be doing is helping develop the starting lineup because you actually had like a really good starting lineup, but instead you play a three guard bench of like Ryan Archidiakono, Chris Dunn, and Shaquille Harrison, and maybe Kobe White. Um, obviously, Kobe White started playing more towards the end of the year, but even then he wasn't even starting. He was clearly playing like one of the best rookies of the season and he still wanted to start him. So I'm very confused by that. And that was probably one of the reasons why he got fired as well. You know, besides the, you know, the guard, the guard Paxson and all, all that, you guys know the front office, right? They, they all got fired. And so they had a new GM takeover. And I think it was a good decision to ultimately fire Jim Boylan. 
Plus, it didn't really seem like he gained respect of the players. I mean, there were so much reports of just just some instability in the locker room, even going into last year, and the players not liking his long practices. And he was just kind of not really a player's coach. He was more of like an older star, older style coach, if that makes sense. Like, this is tactics were not really relevant to use today. So he did lose a lot of the players. And I mean, when you lose, when it seems like, you know, you lose Zach Levine and Larry Mark, and then obviously that's not a good situation when those are the two guys the Bulls are trying to build around. Um, but like I said, I think they had a good team around them, around Zach Levine and Larry Markin for the most part. But if their team had actually been healthy, I think they would have definitely been in the playoffs. And if they didn't have Jim Boylan as a coach, maybe they would have had a coach that, I don't know, I guess the players respected more or at least, you know, wanted to listen to more or, you know, th that type of thing, you know. <laughs> but... I think the Bulls are going to eventually turn around. They're going to have one of the top draft picks because uh, they had another losing season, bad losing season. So enough of the Bulls. Now I want to get to the Kings. So with the Kings, I actually think they're in a better position than the Bulls this past season. I think they have a great collection of young talent with De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley. Obviously kind of the same thing with Larry Markin and Marvin Bagley was injured for practically the whole season. So that didn't really do much, but I think they had a great roster. They honestly had a great bench. Um, and all that, I think they had a great starting lineup. Um, Harrison Barnes complimented, you know, De'Aaron Fox really well. Um, they had a, a good, you know, some good center rotation with Rashawn Holmes, Harry Giles, and Alex Len eventually when he got traded at the end of the year. But the thing I question with Luke Walton is, why do you pay Buddy Heald? You give him a four-year, $94 million contract. And this is why you watch, by the way. He gave him this big contract. And then Luke Walton demotes him to the bench, playing him 20 minutes a game in the bubble, not even giving him like a real opportunity to really succeed. Like he's not even putting him in a position to succeed. And when you don't put your highest paid player in a position to succeed, that's just not gonna bow well. And what's even worse is I saw a report that Luke, that still the front office of the Kings is planning to keep Luke Wallen. Like why? He's put, he's put the Kings best shooter and I'll say second best player of the year in Fox in a position to not succeed. He's put him in too many playmaking and ball scenarios and that's not his role. His role is a shooter. He's basically Klay Thompson, okay? He's that good at shooting. Obviously, he had an off year, but an off year for him is 38% from three, so that kind of shows you how good he's been. But that's what I understand with Luke Wallen, right? Like, it just, it just did not look good all season. Like, I get that they had injuries too, but his rotations were just really weird. And then randomly moving Bogdanovich in, in the lineup for Buddy Heald, I get that maybe he could have fit better, but why do you pay, why do you put your highest paid player on the bench? Just doesn't make sense to me. So I get why Vladi Dibach ultimately resigned. Um, even though I think it was more of a coaching thing and some injuries and just there were a lot of factors. Kind of same thing with the Bulls. Um, and it just didn't pan out well. And obviously Vladi Dibach not want to deal with it anymore. He don't want to deal with the decision of who to move because they have decisions whether to sign you know, whether to keep Buddy Heal or keep Bogdanovich or whether to trade Buddy Heal or whether to keep Luke Walton. And obviously he did not want to deal with that. So that's where they're at. Uh, I, I hope they've hired like Kenny Atkinson or, you know, some other coach in the lower market. Maybe they could hire like Tyron Lue too. But those would be the two guys that I would have as candidates. So yeah, that's my take on the Bulls and the Kings. Hope you guys did enjoy this breakdown. And I think the Bulls and Kings will ultimately have some better success going into next season. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Peace.